Hey everyone, it's your girl Tara Michelle. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Opinionated Scents, our safe space to discuss all things fragrance, whether we like them or not. Today's video is all about new fragrances I've added to my collection. And some of these I was inspired to purchase because of the questions I asked you on my community tab. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video. I realized after watching Pink Von Love's video on a certain Chloe fragrance that I didn't own any from the regular Chloe line. I already owned all three of the Chloe Nomads, so I decided to make a community post asking what the best regular Chloe fragrance was. I received a lot of answers and even some people who jumped into my um, DMs on Instagram to discuss their favorites. Basically, almost unanimously, there was only like really two or three people who mentioned Love Story. Everybody said Love Story had terrible performance and not to waste my time, so I didn't. I also had a lot of people tell me that the tangerine one was like false advertising. Like there was really no tangerine. There was really no point. It was a, a basically a pointless flanker. You guys know I don't like those. So thank you for warning me off of those. Now, the ones I did purchase, um, I will tell you that I purchased a decant of Roses de Chloe Eau de Toilette formulation. So that's what this one is. And I purchased it from FragranceNet. This is not for me. Um, I won't be going too in-depth in this video because I just want to talk about adding these. I haven't had a chance to give all of them a full wear yet. I did wear this one and it gives me that wet rose petal vibe that I really dislike. Um, it also doesn't really last that long. This one has very poor performance, luckily though, because it was giving me a headache. So um, roses, what is it called? Roses de Chloe, not for me. Um, the next one that I picked up was Chloe or the Parfum. Y'all, when this baby hit the air, I about lost my mind. Chloe smells so good. It's one of those pretty for the sake of being pretty fragrances. I prefer it much more on my clothes and in the air. I actually don't like the way it smells on my skin at all, actually. It smells chemical to me on my skin, but my sense of smell has changed since COVID. I can pick up things even more than what I used to. So I think I moved straight past all of the notes that they want us to smell and I get into the chemical breakdown of some things on my skin. So that works out for me because I really only spray perfume on my skin when I'm testing it. Moisturize with a nice thick eucerin uh, or um, gold bond unscented lotion and then test them on my skin just to know if I want to keep them or not. But I don't really spray perfume on my skin anymore for various reasons. Google it, do your, do your own due diligence. I just don't. But um, yes. I do not like it on my skin, but I love Chloe Other Parfum in the air. Um, it feels familiar to me. So it feels like at a previous job before, there are probably several people who used to walk around smelling like this, and I just never knew. But it's a nice, it's a pretty fragrance. It's just, yeah, very nice. I like Chloe Other Parfum. I really do. And that actually was the one that you guys liked the most. So... The one that, oh, uh, which one do I want? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Um, Pink Von Love was actually talking about this fragrance. And as she explained it, I was sitting there going, none of what she's saying is my vibe, but I have to have that. What I think is happening is my palette is changing again, and it is aware. So it's speaking through my brain, which thinks we know what we like when clearly we don't anymore. Because this is Chloe Low. When I tell y'all I love this fragrance, this is Pretty for the sake of being pretty. This is definitely a rosy, floral, perfumey perfume at that. This is not like a, a rose garden or a bed of roses. This is definitely, you know, a chemical compound of stuff that is meant for you to, you know, smell good. But, and that's not normally my vibe, yet I'm feeling this. It's actually one of the fragrances I cannot wait to wear this spring. It is so refreshing. It's just refreshing. Um, like, I don't know, like some kind of, it puts me in the vibe of having, you know how you have lemon water or lime water. If somebody were to give you rose water that you could drink, I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's a thing. Cause I'm, I'm you know, but it just, it's refreshing, like something that you would want to have on, on a nice warm day. And I am enjoying me some Chloe Low, y'all. Okay. So winner, winner, chicken dinner. I'm so glad that's the one I purchased a full bottle of and not the others. Um, now we're going to talk about 
Chloe Eau de Parfum Natural. Now, this is not to be confused with the new Nomad Natural that's coming out. Y'all, new, 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 new. So, when I first sprayed this fragrance on, what is in this? This smells very green, bitter and sharp to me at first. I don't like, and it smells medicinal somehow, like, like, like amoxicillin or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, whatever this is, it is green. It gives me a headache. So I'm not going to keep smelling it to try to pinpoint what it is. Then again, look at me. I just have to smell it. Yeah, it's very green to me. There's a green leafy something in here. And definitely rose. So, you know, I don't know what's in here. I didn't even look at the notes. I just purchased it because, again, I had points and I could get it for free. The first thing I thought when I sprayed this on me was that this was a formulation they had been working on when they were first creating Chloe Nomad before they put the patchouli in. And somebody said, this is not working. Put it up on the shelf of nose and we'll get rid of it later. And that person wasn't paying attention and accidentally put it on the shelves of yes, we'll come back to later. And so when they grabbed it off of that shelf, thinking they could trust that this was something they wanted to work with, they created this and sold it to the masses. And actually, it was supposed to be a reject. We, we, we were never supposed to experience this. Um, that is what the opening is for me. I literally do not like this perfume. So the mid comes in and it starts to dial it back a bit. And then when the dry down fully hits, it's like, okay, this is a pretty floral. It's a pretty green floral fragrance. All natural, the name fits perfectly. Um, I don't want it in my collection. I don't need it. I don't even know who I'm going to gift it to, but somebody is going to get it. And um, I'm not mad at the mid and the dry down. I am very confrontational with the, the opening. Uh, but once you get to the mid and the dry down, it's not bad if you just want another typical, mundane, run-of-the-mill, regular old, basic green uh, floral. That's all I got. It is clear to me that I'm going to have to dive into the house of Nest. Because, honey, let me tell you guys something. This is Golden Nectar by Nest. This is what the packaging actually looks like. Y'all, baby, let me tell you something. Has there ever been a sexier floral? I'm, I'm not really sure. The nectar in this, the sweetness in this. This, uh, this, is, this reminds me of, it, it gives me that youthful body spray-ish type of smell that Eden Juicy Apple from K.I.L.E. does. Um, but this is how you take a body spray, make it into a perfume, and add supreme amounts of sex appeal. I hate to even mention body spray to it, but there is, there is something that is in the DNA of a lot of body sprays, even across companies, where it just feels really youthful. Um, so I don't mean that as a dig. I promise I do not. It reminds me so much of something in K.I.L.E.'s um, apple juicy, juicy eating, don't eat the fruit, Eve put it down, whatever you call that fragrance. Um, something is reminiscent of that to me. Gosh, this is amazing. I love this. I think that Nest runs kind of expensive too, though. So I don't know. But I want this. I might be asking for this for Mother's Day. I'm really, really intrigued. I got to give it a full wear because I just sprayed it on my pulse points and just couldn't stop smelling it. Want to pick it up and smell it again now. Again, that is Nest New York Golden Nectar. I love this fragrance. The other day, again, on my community tab, I asked if you guys had ever come across an inexpensive fragrance that just like blew you away. For whatever reason, it had you taken aback. Baby baby this right here prompted that conversation prompted that question and i have been hearing about this for years at least three four years i think demi rollin was the first person i think i ever saw talk about it i was unfazed didn't care didn't pay attention but recently it was lime light lass that talked about this on her channel because she got the original this flanker and the other flanker i think it's called tattoo um, this is a lover dose by diesel and I think it's called red kiss lover dose red kiss by diesel If you have smelled this fragrance, I need you to hop up in the comments 
this hit different. I was not expecting to like this like this. Baby, it is, it, it, it is, it is the quintessential designer or celebrity fragrance like vibe. You're not going to smell this and think that you're doing something niche. I'm not saying that. Not everything has to be life altering, world shattering, you know, soul changing. Sometimes something just speaks to you because it's good, because it's sexy, because it's sweet, like you like it. I just want to push this right in my chest. It is the perfect shape to be my heart and just, just put it in there. I really, really, this speaks to the my inner St. Louis uh, city girl. I'm telling you, it's a whole vibe. It's a whole vibe. I literally, when this came in, I was like, oh, okay. I have my scent of the day and I put it on and I wore it and I just said, yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm, I'm just, I love it. I don't care. Um, like I said, hit me up in the comments if you are familiar with this fragrance and if you vibe with it, even if you didn't vibe with it, you can say that too. Next up, I'm going to talk to you guys about two samples that I still have a little bit left of. One of these is called Dao Chan and the other one is called Ayanari or Ianari from Harmony Perfumes. Guys, I'm gonna go in depth in these in a different video, but I'm telling you now, these are two of the most beautiful floral fragrances I've ever smelled. Um, Ayanari is just stunning. It's stunning. And what it does in the air is incredible. With Harmony Perfumes, which is the niche house I've been talking about here lately, um, making my way slowly through all 14 samples, um, Ayanari smells one way on my skin and another way in the air. And both of them are fire. Like it is, so, guys, if you have been the people, because he's told me that several of you have ordered samples from him. I hope Ayanari and Dao Chan were, were one of them. Because I'm telling you, and Dao Chan, oh, I'm not even that much of a floral girl. And I love this. Last but not least, I want to talk to you guys about four Dua perfumes I purchased. Um, they've only been sitting for like three weeks, three or maybe a month. Um, and so I'm not ready to speak on them at length yet. But I just have to be honest about something real quick, y'all. And I hope nobody in Dua gets mad because y'all know I'm going to keep it real regardless. But we're going to talk about Carmelos or Caramelos. Caramelos, and this one here is supposed to be inspired by Prada Candy. I don't understand. I don't understand. Either mine is super new and really needs to sit for another two months, or I don't understand because this doesn't smell like Prada Candy to me. Not even close. Like this fragrance is a standalone fragrance. It has way some, some citrus in it, something that is very uplifting and bright. I never got that from any of my product candies and I wore product candy for years. Um, so I like the fragrance. I do. I like how it changes and develops on my skin. I like how it um, projects and I like the longevity. But when it comes time for me to compare it to product candy, I just find that to be laughable to me because it's so nothing like it to me. So I'll continue to let it sit. I may even have to go and kidnap the last Prada candy I gifted away just, but I know for a fact it does not smell like Prada candy that I remember. Unless they reformulated Prada candy since last October, I don't, I don't get the comparison. Pretty fragrance. Love the way it transitions, but as a standalone, I just can't compare it to Prada candy. This next fragrance here is hands down my new favorite vanilla from the House of Dua. Yes, that's what I said. This is Alexandra Short. Now, I think she's a real person because somebody with this name talks to me inside the Facebook group. So I hope she's a real person or I'm losing it. Y'all might need to pray for me, but it smells amazing. This is one of those pretty flat white um, vanillas. This is, um, it changes, it, it gets better with time. Like I spray the stick when I first get it and then lock it up in here with it. It doesn't go anywhere, y'all. Do it. I just, I'm talking about do it just last and last and last and last on paper. Because of course, paper isn't sweating or taking baths and showers and stuff so it can last. But I love the way it's ever changing. It's one of those vanillas that's just pretty. It's not some cheap synthetic smelling one. It's not some childish one. It is definitely just grown and sexy, but it is, you know, like subdued. Like she is sexy without trying to be sexy. Like she minds her own business, doesn't care what you think, but just happens to be sexy anyway. So I love it. 
Um, next we have Hey Sweetie, which is supposed to be, it's supposed to be inspired by Oriana from Parfums de Marley. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to say this. I do get very similar vibes it, of what Oriana was from what I remember. I just purchased a new Oriana sample to do a side-by-side -side comparison, but I will tell you based on my memory. Oriana had this um, dryer sheets, chalky thing to it. It didn't stink to me. I did refer to it a, a couple of days ago on a live as being whack, but the main reason it's whack to me is because it's a $320 price tag on that thing and she's not even worth it. She might be worth $75. $320, I'm gonna go with that absolutely not. But it is a pretty cute fragrance. But I don't, I don't spend $320 for cute. <laughs> what? However, hey, sweetie, smells so good. Smells so reminiscent of what I remember it to be without the dryer sheet chalky smell. So for me, my favorite version between the two is going to be Hey Sweetie from the House of Dua. Longevity, unstoppable. Unstoppable. So yeah, we'll be doing a side-by-side -side comparison with those two soon. Let, let me, oh, I, I was going to say, what's, oh my gosh, y'all, listen to me. This is quite possibly my favorite dual fragrance of all time. Y'all know what that means. Terror Squad, I know what that means. People who are in doing, you know what that means. It means a lot when I come up my mouth and say that. Let me tell y'all something. One of the hardest notes, there are several fruits that are really, really hard to do without coming across super synthetic and nasty. Pineapple is one of those notes. I love the note of pineapple when done correctly. This thing here reminds me of pineapple now, laters, but like grown and sexy. And then one of my favorite notes in the world is musk. So when you tell me you making something called musky pineapple, immediately I must have it. They did the darn thing. Oh my gosh. I don't care if nobody else in the world likes this. I, I literally, listen to me, I do not care. I live for this fragrance. I love this fragrance. It is something I cannot wait hate to start spraying all over the place it has been so icky and so blizzardy and so freaking cold here that i just don't even want to waste my time putting this beautiful fragrance on yet but when i tell you guys get ready for it to get used this spring i that's it that's all i got love obsessed dedicate my everything to musky pineapple from dua hands down perfectly phenomenal. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. That is just a small glimpse into some of the fragrances that I've added to my collection. The next video where I finish this haul, we're going to talk more in depth about these 12 decants I've been telling y'all about for several videos now. I have worn them all. I have experienced them all and I have a lot to say. So look forward to that. Please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to the Terror Squad. Come on and join my channel as well as select that notification bell so that you never miss any of my future uploads. As always, I love talking to you guys in the comments. Please, let's talk about this Lover Dose Red Kiss. Let's talk about any of these, the Chloe's, the Duas. Let's get into it. Until then, guys. Bye.